Well, welcome back. We're now in section 7.3, continuing with this idea of rotating things around a particular axis. And, uh, you know, 7.2 and 7.3 are closely connected. Uh, one is 7.2, we were doing the what we call the disk washer method on rotating axis. So if you'll notice, the pattern was that your functions were in terms of x, and then you were rotating around the x-axis, or, or something parallel to the x-axis, or the function was in terms of y, and you were rotating around the y-axis or something parallel to the y-axis. Now, this being said, what about if my function is in terms of x, and I want to rotate around an opposing axis, like for example the y-axis, or the function is in terms of y, and I want to rotate around the x-axis, or maybe parallel to the x-axis. Now again, the disk washer method only works when the axis of rotation and the variable, the independent variable of your function happens to be the same. When the function is in terms of x, I'm rotating around the x-axis or parallel, that's a disk washer method. The function is in terms of y, and I'm rotating around the y-axis or something parallel to the y-axis, y to y is the uh, disk washer method as well. So x to x, y to y, disk washer method. But if I want to go around opposing axis, we had to have to come up with a different formula. A special formula called the shell method, called cylindrical shell method to be fancy about it. Now, here's the idea and here's the formula broken down into basic terms here. Volume is equal to 2 pi times what I call the point radius times f of x minus g of x dx. Now this is me the function is in terms of x, and I'm actually going to be rotating around something parallel to or the y-axis. Y-axis are parallel to the y-axis. Here, f of x is the top. g of x is the bottom part of your region. The point radius is the distance of a random point x in the region is away from the axis of rotation. And this thing is based upon uh, cylindrical shells or the circumference. And the circumference formula is... 2 pi r, and your professor will go into great details about 2 pi r and how it was derived in this. So there's your 2 pi, there's the r part, and then you have the little top minus bottom little wedge that you're taking and rotating around to actually get the actual rotation into the volume here. Okay, and the top minus bottom, f of x minus g of x, is called the height of the shell. They're going to ask you these questions on like web work and stuff on the height of the shell. Remember that your top minus bottom or f of x minus g of x here. Okay, so, and of course, I could take this formula and go 2 pi and integral from c to d of what we call the point radius of f of y minus g of y dy, the function will be in terms of y, and that means I'm going to be rotating around the x-axis if it is using the shell method. So there are actually two different formulas here that uh, kind of derive this stuff. Volume equals the integral from a to b of the circumference times the height of dx, and volume equals the integral from a to b of the circumference times the height of dy. And the circumference is this 2 pi r we were talking about, and that height is that f of x minus g of x if I was doing dx, or f of y minus g of y if I was doing dy. Okay. So, let's look at some applications of this. Now, first off, let's take a look at this question. Sketch and find the uh, volume of the region in the first quadrant bounded by the curves y equals 4x minus x cubed and y equals 0. Rotate it about the y-axis. First set up the integral and then evaluate it. All right. But look at this problem. First off, let's graph this region. And I'm going to use my calculator here. y equals 4x minus x cubed. And I'm just going to do a zoom 6 on it so you guys can see it. Okay. But again, first quadrants. All I care about is that first quadrant. So it comes in and loops and comes back down. So I got this interesting stuff coming over here, but this first quadrant right in here is what I'm interested in. And then it keeps on going back down. There's my first quadrant stuff there. Okay. So this is the graph of y equals 4x minus x cubed. Y equals zero. That's also known as the x-axis. X-axis, y equals zero. So we're talking about this region right in here. Okay. Now, we want to figure out the points of intersection here. So 
that equal to each other. Zero equals four x minus x cubed. I can factor out an x out of this thing, so that would be zero equals x times four minus x squared. Again, that's my classic difference of squares. That'll be two minus x times two plus x. I set each factor equal to zero, and I solve. This gives me x equals zero, x equals two, and x equals negative two, but in the first quadrant, don't care about that guy, there's the x equals negative two here, so it's from zero to two. Okay. But this is a nasty looking function, look at this. Four uh, x minus x cubed. All right. Notice that you can only use cylindrical shell method and not the slicing dishwasher method because the slicing dishwasher method requires to solve for x in terms of y. Now, remember, we're trying to rotate around the y-axis. And this is the whole purpose of the uh, shell method. The function's in terms of x, and I want to go around the y-axis. That screams shell. But you know, you could possibly use the dishwasher method, but to be able to use dishwasher, they have to have the same variable. Y-axis, you got to solve for x in terms of y. So solving for x in terms of y is going to be impossible. How do I get x equals by himself? I don't without it being implicit or something, brothers, and I don't want that. So I cannot solve for x on this equation because the equation is too nasty. I can only use the cylindrical shell method, which is a method that takes, leaves the function and the variable of the function the way it is. This thing is in terms of x, and that's the way it's supposed to be, and we're going to rotate around the y-axis, okay, around the opposing axis. So shell method, volume equals 2 pi integral, what I call the point radius times the height, which is the top minus bottom dx. I think I called it f of x minus g of x dx before. Same thing. Okay. Well, the top part, no problem there. The height of this thing is going to be 4x minus x cubed. Put a little parentheses around that. Minus the bottom is the equation y equals 0. There's your height, top minus bottom dx. There's my 2 pi integral. All I've got to do now is figure out the point radius. The point radius is an arbitrary distance of an arbitrary point. This functions in terms of x, so there's an arbitrary x point inside my region, and the distance between that point and the axis. Here's my axis of rotation, which is the y-axis, and this is y-axis is x equals zero, so the distance between an arbitrary point x back to zero is right minus left. Remember, it's always the distance is right minus left or top minus bottom. This will be right minus left, or x minus 0, and x minus 0 is x. That will be my point radius. You take an arbitrary point inside your region and calculate the distance from that arbitrary point back to your axis. That's what the point radius is. My bounds are from 0 to 2, and this is the integral. Well, I can clean them up a little bit. 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 of x times 4x minus x cubed dx. This is my integral, setting it up if they ever ask me to set it up. But in this problem, we also ask you to evaluate it. Okay, fine. If I want to evaluate this thing by hand, I want to clean it up. This will be 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 of distribute your function because there's no powers on this stuff. So distribute, that'll be 4x squared minus x to the fourth dx. And now I integrate it, leaving my 2 pi out front. Integral of 4x squared is 4x cubed over 3, minus integral x to the fourth is x to the fifth over 5. And I evaluated from 0 to 2. And then I use the fundamental theorem of calculus. I plug in top, that will be 4 times 2 cubed over 3, minus 2 to the fifth over 5 minus 2 pi plug in bottom, but when I plug in 0, yeah, I just pretty much go ahead and get 0 there. So now all i got to do is crunch this thing out. 4 times 2 cubed divided by 3 minus 2 to the fifth divided by 5 okay.
kidding. Oh, well, that's just bad math here. Greetings, the fifth over five. wrong button okay and don't forget so I'm actually plugging this in on my calculator just to let you guys know there it is right there and then so let me just do that so you guys can see it there it is but then don't forget to go multiple at times 2 pi so I'm gonna go for that classic fraction look which is equal to 128 over 15 pi units cubed but this is also a great time to introduce, while we're in section 7, that you know we can use our math number 9 integral button on this thing just to double check everything out. So that will be from 0 to 2 of, I went ahead and cleaned them up, you can put it back in the original problem here, x times another 4x minus x cubed, and then close parentheses there, dx. You'll notice something rather when I get my answer. I happen to leave the 2 pi part off. So don't forget to multiply it times 2 and then convert it to your fraction and then stick the pi back on the answer. So my calculator can be very helpful in helping me integrate this stuff and your professors will emphasize that fact too. Setting up the integral and sometimes we'll make you work it by hand and sometimes we'll may even allow you to use the calculator on it. Okay, let's look at another problem. There's only two more left. All right. Sketch and find the volume of the region bounded by the curves y equals 3 over x, y equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Rotate about the y-axis. Just set up using the cylindrical shell method. Because this problem, you could use either one, disk washer or shell method, 7.2 or 7.3 method. First thing you want to do is this. Graph it. y equals 3 over x looks like this. Here's graph of y equals 3 over x. x uh, y equals 0 is the x-axis. So there's my x-axis, known, known as y equals 0. x equals 1. There's x equals 1. Here is x equals 3. Okay. And now, what exactly am I trying to calculate? I want to rotate this region about the y-axis. My function is in terms of x, and I want to go around the y-axis. That screams shell method, and that's what we told you to do. But because this is a simple problem, you could have solved for x in terms of y and manipulated this thing and then tried to use the disk washer method on it. But even then, I think it will be easier to use a shell method. So shell method is volume equals 2 pi times integral of the point radius times top minus bottom, so if we're going function in terms of x around the y-axis, the function in terms of x means it's going to be dx from a to b. So volume equals 2 pi times the integral from a to b. Pick an arbitrary point inside my region and the distance between that back to the y-axis, which is also known as x equals 0. The distance between x and x equals 0 is a distance of x, right minus left, x minus 0 times top, which is 3 over x, minus bottom, which is y equals 0, dx. And my bounds are between 1 and 3. So this particular problem, volume equals 2 pi, clean them up a little bit, from 1 to 3, of x times 3 over x minus 0, top minus bottom, dx will give you the volume of this particular region rotated around the y-axis. And if you can, just to get that visual perspective on it, this is my region. I'm rotating around the y-axis, so there's a reverse image over here. This is what you're finding the volume of. you got to think 3D on this stuff. But they just said set up the integral. So this is me setting up my integral. Take a look at the next one. Sketch and find the volume of the region bounded by the curves y equals 3 over x, y equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals 3. But this time, we want to rotate around the line x equals 1. So it's the exact same region as in the last problem, but they're changing the axis. So again, draw my picture. Here is the 
is the line y equals 3 over x. Here is the x-axis, also known as y equals 0. Here is the line x equals 1. Here's the line x equals 3. And so here's my region. But this time, the axis is x equals negative 1. Here's negative 1 right there. This is the axis of rotation, x equals negative 1. Again, we're just supposed to set up the integral on this guy. But again, the functions in terms of x, and I really don't want to change that up, and I'm rotating around something parallel to the y-axis. So that's that opposite axis to the variable mindset, that shell method. So volume is equal to 2 pi times integral of what I call the point radius times top f of x minus bottom g of x dx from a to b. The point radius, here's the deal on this problem. The point radius is from an arbitrary point, just on there he is, x inside my region, back to the axis of rotation. And remember, when you're moving left or right and you need a distance, it's right minus left. If you're moving up or down and you need a distance, it's top minus bottom. This right minus left, so the point rad, point radius would be x on the right minus negative 1 on the left, which cleans up to be x plus 1. However, just to let you guys know, let's say I put the axis over here at 4. x equals 4. Now 4 is on the right and x is on the left. That'll be 4 minus x would be your axis of rotation. So it's always... It's, well, it depends on where the axis is. It's either number minus x or x minus a number. It's always right minus left when it comes to these functions in terms of x's rotating around the y-axis or something parallel to y-axis. So in this case, the point radius is arbitrary point x is in the middle. Negative 1 is on the left. Right x minus negative 1 minus negative 1 is x plus 1. Times the function on top is 3 over x minus the function on bottom is 0 dx, my bounds of my region, I only care about the region goes on the bounds, is from 1 to 3. So here is the formula that will give me, using the cylindrical shell method, give me the volume of taking this, rotate, this region and rotating around the line x equals negative 1. And if you draw it out, here's your region. Here's the axis y equals, uh, x equals equals negative 1, and then it's equal distance on the other side as you rotate it around. So it's going to give you the same picture as before as up here, except it's been spread out a little bit more. Well, I hope these videos have been helpful, and I'll see you guys on the next video.